light, and peace in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. I call upon you, Lord, come quickly to me. Give ear to my voice when I call to you. Let my prayer be counted as incense before you, and the lifting up of my hands as an evening sacrifice. In the brightness of your sun we spend each day, in the darkness of the night you light our way. Always you protect us with the umbrella of your love. To you, God, be all praise and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen indeed.
Amen. It's a good night to praise God. It's a good night to be alive. It's a good night to remember that we are God's creation. All of this given and created so that we may have life. We thank you, Lord, for this. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have given us, Lord. Merciful Father, hear us now as we praise you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Jesus. 
How sweet, how sweet to hear the sound of God whispering into our ear. How sweet when we can connect with the divine. How sweet when we can hear God's very letter of love given to us. This night we'll be reading from Psalm 19. I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard, from Psalm 19. As with previous nights, we'll read it through once and then take a moment of silent reflection upon fully hearing Psalm 19, then I'll read it again at a slightly slower pace so that we can listen and hear and let the words bounce upon our very heart, our very soul, and perhaps pay attention to what calls out to us. Let us now hear from Psalm 19 this night. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. 
Take a moment to let these words wash upon you in silent reflection. Let us now hear again from Psalm 19, words of David given to him by God himself. During this reading, let it wash over you. Let your mind follow its path and its course. Pay attention to what springs forward. What jumps into your imagination, into your understanding? May God bless the reading of this holy word. May it wash over us. May it comfort us. May it encourage us. From Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God. And the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard, yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. What a glorious celebration we see of God's holy order of life and of all creation. That these statements remind us to observe the law of God and that we will be given fulfillment as we live into those divine words, those divine laws. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So what did you hear? What called out to you? What begged for your attention? What perhaps made you uncomfortable? What in the reading would you rather have not heard? Now measure whether the hearing and your response to it are from God or from yourself. Do we wish to be inspired by God, ruled by God, or does that make us uncomfortable? And instead, we wish to do our own thing in our own way. And what in that is truly the message for us? In verse 12, but who can detect their errors clear me from hidden faults keep back your servant also from the insolent do not let them have dominion over me then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression interesting words keep your servant keep me back from the insolent, those who would defy, who would deny God's glory, God's rightful judgment. Those who would mock God, keep me back from them. Do not let them who deny and mock God have dominion over me. Do not let them rule my thoughts, Lord. Let me be led by you, Lord. Then and only then shall I be blameless and innocent of great transgression. How do we read transgression? Of great error, of great sin. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Glorious words, wonderful words wonderful words for life. Let us now lead into our time of prayer. I invite you to call to your own heart, your own minds, those situations, those people, those places which may be putting a burden upon you or you have an extra concern for today. Bring them to mind as we pray. Bring them to mind as we hear from the Lord, as we bear our souls before the very throne of God. Let us enter into a time of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer this night as we open our hearts to you. Lord, in your mercy, as our friends and our family come to mind, as the people of this church who are struggling through all types of illness and difficulty and frustration, from anger, from doubt, from anxiety, from worry and fear, Lord, that you would be in their hearts and in their minds tonight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for those who suffer, for those who are in all kinds of trouble, for those who cannot get a grasp or a handle upon this life, for those who waste their time, waste their energy, waste their emotions. 
for those who are physically unable, for those who are sick, for those who are ill in all manners and forms. Lord, heal them, comfort them, and bring them peace. Together in your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for this community, for not only this township, but for our county, our state, for all that we know and all that we understand, Lord, for the difficulties of life, for the difficulties of living together, for the difficulties of simply being a human being, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together, Lord, we pray for the world and for the people of the world, for those who are struggling throughout the world, for those who are kidnapped and held ransom for their faith, for those who are persecuted for what they claim and believe, for those, Lord, who have lost their faithful center and have turned themselves over to routine and to ritual and have abandoned the Spirit's call upon their life. For all of the leaders of the world, Lord, for the many judgments that are being made in and against them, that you would move into their lives, that you would cause them to turn to faith, that you would give wisdom to the simple-minded, that you would strike down the arrogant and the proud, and again turn their minds and their hearts back to your will, to your way, that they can find strength in leadership by the presence of God in their life, and not because of their own misunderstanding or their own assumed wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray, Lord, for the church universal throughout this land, throughout the world, for the leaders of all the churches that proclaim Christ as King, as Lord, and as Savior, for the members of those churches, for the congregations, for the mission of those churches, for the leadership within, Lord, that you would strengthen them. that wherever they stray from you to do their own thing, that you would cause them to be weak and ineffective. And wherever they grow in response to you and do your will, that they would grow strong and filled with the Spirit, filled with encouragement, supported in their ministry, supported in their mission. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together, Lord, we pray for the communion of saints, for all whom we have loved, who have gone on before us, who knew you by a walk with faith, that you would continue to bless them as they live in presence with you, and that you would encourage us and remind us by the strength of the faith of our mothers and fathers, our grandfathers and grandmothers who have gone on before us, by the strength and the faithful witness of so many saints, prophets, teachers, evangelists, simple, believing, faithful people, by their testimony that you would strengthen us into holding firm into what we believe, that our understanding of who you are and what your life means to us and how we fit into God's kingdom, that that would be strengthened and affirmed so that we may no longer doubt, so that we may no longer grow weary when oppressed or opposed, so that we will stand firm on Christ, our solid rock, and fulfill your will for your church and for this land and for the kingdom of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, with the understanding of Christ as our Savior, our Lord, and our Master, let us pray the prayer we were taught so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And with that, brothers and sisters, I call you into your faith. May the grace of Jesus Christ enfold you. May it capture you and hold you close to him who saves. Go now in peace and in all things. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen and amen.